Welcome back, boys and girls. I am glad to have you back with me. I had a hopefully a quick video today. Uh, despite the length of this video, I feel like this is actually pretty important. It was a major breakthrough for me. So um, I was reached out to a while back. I think it was over winter. Matt Sanford. I'm sure you've all heard of Matt. He has a great YouTube channel. If you have not subscribed to him, well, subscribe to me first, obviously. Uh, but then after that, go over to Matt's channel and check it out and subscribe. He has a ton of great content. Um, and I think he's so busy now that I don't know that he's made many more videos, but um, lots of practical things you can go over there and learn from. But at any rate, he reached out to me and said, you know, what's going on with the idle integral error? Nothing I do ever makes it change. It's always the same. It has a mind of its own. What's going on? So um, at the time over winter, my transmission uh, went out and I was in the middle of pulling it out for a rebuild and this and that. Um, and this was always on my back burner you know, to get to. And uh, finally, I got around to it uh, today and uh, learned some amazing things. So um, we'll talk about uh, the idle air has two adaptives, proportional and integral. And uh, just like any of the adaptives in these cars, if they're not zero, then that means they are compensating for something. Something is out of whack. So uh, this is a screenshot of the settings for a 2014 Cadillac CTSV proportional and integral throttle controller for the adaptives. This is the one that you would want to use. Um, a lot of new people, including myself, um, they feel like they need to come in here and change these values. Don't do that. You will cause more problems than you will ever solve. So either use the stock settings for your vehicle or copy the 2014 Cadillac CTSV and don't mess with them. They're perfect. They're fine out of the box. Uh, don't even mess with them. But I do want to call out a couple things here. So if we look on the right, the proportional and integral. In general, when you're looking at your squiggly line generator, uh, that being the VCM scanner, you're going to notice that proportional pretty much is at zero. Well, I mean, hopefully it's at zero. Um, that's been my experience anyway. It doesn't really move. It may jump a few decimals up and down, but it's mostly pretty much useless. But what you're going to see is integral all over the place. And maybe not all over the place, but you're going to either see it hanging high or low or whatever, but it's not going to be zero. And the reason why is if you look at those RPM errors, you have to have an error of greater than 50 RPMs for proportional to do anything. Uh, but integral is basically always being triggered. An error of 12 RPMs or more integrals in there jumping in and it is working. Um, I'm not going to explain a PI controller. If you go back into my catalog, I did um, a video about tuning your oxygen sensors, uh, your O2 sensors, and I go kind of in depth about what proportional integral and derivative controllers are and how they act. It's high level. It's simple. It's just, you know, conceptual type learning. Um, but if this uh, interests you to learn more, go check out that video. Uh, oh, sorry, ma'am, in the back. Yes, the blonde. Uh, did you have a question? Oh, yes. No, as I said before, use the 2014 Cadillac CTS. You know what? Forget it. Come see me after class. Bring your friends if they have any questions, too. All right, let's 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 move on. Now, this is uh, what I would call kind of a high-level overview. Here's all the things that are impacting your idle control. On the left side, we have spark, and on the right side, we have airflow. The spark is easy, right? And I wish we had a much more easier way to control the idle air, but we do not. So we're basically saying, hey, computer, let me get my laser pointer out here. Hey, computer, use this base air. That's not a laser pointer, that's like a pen. Here we go. Here's your entry point, right? You want to idle, you need to use this amount of spark. If you go under or over, you need to, you know, reference these adaptive spark tables uh, to control the RPMs. By the way, 
There's another guy hanging in the back. I've seen this come up a time or two on the forums recently. And that is if your virtual torque tables are such that they are calculating torque higher than what's in here, assuming that it is enabled, timing will be cut and it will control the torque and you will likely get some surging idle. So just be aware that this is in here. But ideally, all we're doing is we're hitting this under speed and over speed and kind of bouncing back and forth, but hanging out right here at the idle spark advance, the base setting. But we also have this minimum spark, and this is a cap, right? No matter what goes on, no matter how bad things get, don't ever even think about reducing timing beyond this point. Like this is a hard guideline. It's the gutter, right? We, uh, you know, or guardrail. We can't move past it. It is unmovable. All right, that makes sense. And I wish we could do air like this for idle, but we can't. So what we have over here, if we look on the right side of, of over air, the ECM has idle desired airflow. And by the way, this PID and a few other PIDs I'm about to reference, there is a chance that your ECM, well, maybe I should say, HP Tuners has not mapped these in your scanner. I can't control that. I'm sorry. All you can do is ask HP Tuners to add them. Fingers crossed they will do that. But idle desired airflow is what the ECM says. I think I need this much air. And then from there, we have this PI controller. Um, and so it's kind of bouncing back and forth between here. And then we do have a safety cap down here. Base running airflow, air flow final minimum. So that's saying no matter what you decide here and no matter what the PNI controller tell you to do, there is no way in heck you can ever go lower than this amount of air. Now, I'm going to pause here and I'm going to say, how do people tune idle? Well, you know, they'll they'll throw in a guess for spark and probably use the stock settings here. Um, and then they're going to come over to here, and then they're just going to start pumping up this airflow final minimum. Now, that's crazy to me. Your beginners and professionals are like are basically using this base running airflow, and me too, right? I'm not throwing anybody under the bus. It's just kind of how we understand this thing to work. That would be like using the minimum spark, uh, minimum final spark to control your idle timing. We don't want to use this guardrail to control timing. So why are we using this guardrail here to control our idle air? So basically, air is going to bounce off this thing. Bounce, bounce, bounce. You're not going to get like over here kind of a natural oscillation between high and low, right? You're going to bounce off this and then it's going to shoot back up and it's going to bounce, right? It's really not going to just kind of casually just float around in here like we want it to. Okay, so I had a aha moment when I was looking at the values in the scanner and I'm like, well, what is idle desired airflow? How is that being calculated or determined or whatever? And so I noticed there's a relationship. There's idle SS airflow, which I'm going to assume is not super sport airflow, but steady state airflow. Proportional, as I mentioned, most likely you're always going to see it zero. It may be a couple decimals, but not a big deal. And then we have idle integral airflow. And mine is always kind of in this range. 2.3, 2.45, something kind of in there. When you add all of those up, you magically get the idle desired airflow. So boom. All right. So we know that this pretty much stays flat. This pretty much always stays constant-ish. You know, it doesn't fluctuate up and down like Spark, but it floats between 2.3 and 2.4, at least for me. But this integral is in direct response to, hey, the computer made a guess at this steady state airflow. The other interesting thing is, in this case, 9.91, it stays flat. It stays constant. While integral is kind of bouncing a little bit, it's a little fuzzy, this is a straight solid line. It does not budge. So if we look at this, 
Um, I, another test I did was, you know, shifting in between park and drive. You can see that the computer said, oh, oh, you shifted to park. It looks like we need more air, right? So that's what this red line is, our steady state air. Um, and then our integral, after we shift into drive, you can see this integral starting to grow. And then I shift up and down into park or drive or neutral, whatever, just to kind of see what happens. And so you can see, um, you know, pretty much what I say, like, Proportional is, eh, we don't have a big error, not more than 50, who cares? But integral is kind of hopping. So then the question is, um, well, how do we change this steady state airflow? But aside from shifting from park into gear or whatever. So um, there's a bunch of things, a lot of tests. I'm not going to walk you through all the, the tune files and log files, but Virtual torque. I had my hopes pinned on virtual torque. And then I tried throttle follower torque. I tried updating the VE table. Um, I finally gave up the mass airflow sensor. It's physically removed with an IAT in its place, and I'm just on the two bar OS. Um, and a few other things I can't remember. Um, but I kind of had an interesting moment. Um, I was in the the scanner and I went to the bi-directional vehicle controls and I bumped up the commanded idle RPMs to 850. And when I did that, we see this corresponding steady state jump. And this is in park, right? So we could see, okay, so something is going on here. We need more RPMs um, without changing the idle, or sorry, the timing. We got to get more air. So the computer is calculating this. Where is it coming from? So, you know, the fact that the idle steady state air is always flat, it's not fluctuating with RPM and map and timing like everything else. There's, there's something in the background controlling it. Um, like it's a, it's a predetermined kind of calculated value. And so, you know, my thinking was, well, we know the computer knows the, the RPM that we want and it knows the timing we want it to use. So it has to bridge that gap. How much air then do I need uh, to make the certain amount of torque to hit that RPM? And again, I'm like, why isn't virtual torque doing anything? So like I'm thinking like, and I like went to bed and I woke up and I'm like, I got an idea. We'll get to that in a, in a second, just a teaser. So. Um, this is kind of what it looks like. The idle control is controlled by PIS, proportional air, integral air, steady state air, and then spark advance. So these are the things that input and then the output is it uh, generates torque, which creates RPM. And so you can see you drop more air or more advance and our, our timing or our RPMs will raise, right? So again, the computer is asking itself, how much air do I need to combine with this timing uh, to make whatever torque is needed to hit my RPM target? So there's like some internal uh, frictional losses inside a model inside the computer that says, you know, you know, different RPMs, there's so much friction, there's so much uh, resistance from the torque converter or whatever, like I kind of know, I got to need to know like how much torque is needed to overcome that. So how does it do that? MBT, baby, max torque timing. This is what I found. I will call your attention. HP Tuner says, we do not recommend modifying this table. So, um, and it's funny timing, no pun intended, but I just did that uh, video on ignition timing, RPM, and burn speed, all really talking about maximum base torque timing. So. This is the theoretical spark advance that delivers maximum torque. The ECM torque calculation routines reference this table when estimating current engine torque output to the relative to the theoretical maximum. So whatever, I'm going to send it, right? Because in my opinion, this is probably fine for a stock or near stock engine, but I don't have a stock cam. I have more compression. And I have different heads, aftermarket heads on this thing, uh, and obviously different exhaust too. So this max torque timing table is, 
is out the window, right? So I went in and I changed just the idle area. So this is what happens when I did this. So on the left, initial settings, eight, uh, 700 RPMs, and I bumped that up to 850. The uh, timing advance was pretty low at 13 degrees. I bumped that up to 18 degrees. Um, the torque table, that maximum uh, base torque, was in the idle area 22 degrees. I changed it to 13. So these are the kind of the metrics that I'm looking at to determine if this is uh, positive or negative. So you can see our steady state air went from 9.91. This is in gear, foot on brake, idling, dead stop. And it bumped us up almost five grams per second. Proportional again, stays zero, no big change or no big uh, uh, revelation there. Uh, but the integral air, uh, you know, again, 2.3 to 2.4 ish dropped down to 0.9 grams per second. Now, the only um, bad thing or the negative uh, metric here is the spark adapts were working a little bit harder. So you can see overall there was a range of about 7.3 degrees of spark advance, and now we went to 9 uh, degrees. So, uh, but again, keep in mind, this these initial settings and results, this is what I've been working on. Like, I've been polishing this idol for a long time, right? And so. Obviously, my integrals is it's better, but it's not zero, right? Um, oh, yeah. Also, I finally got the map to drop by 4 kPa, so that's nice. And there was also an overall tighter RPM control, uh, it, tighter by 25 degrees. So that's interesting, too. Oh, I guess that was the last slide. So anyway, I'm not sure if uh, you guys feel comfortable or not. Um, modifying this table it's probably not for everybody i would say this is advanced this is experimental maybe something to think about um and again all you really need i think to make this happen is that idle integral error so hopefully your os has that mapped and i would be very curious um, if you want to do a test <clears throat> you know drop that mbt table in the idle area try raising it too and see how that that impacts that integral. Anyway, I hope you got something out of this. You found this interesting. Um, I think it's interesting. If uh, you wouldn't mind, click the uh, buttons down below. Uh, let me know what you think. And uh, if you do a good job tuning, I'm going to see you in the winner circle, baby. Later.